My recollection of the founding of the organization was that it was an idea that came from the Department of Fish and Wildlife to provide a, an external vehicle that was not tied to the budgeting process where people could give money to assist the department in projects that uh, were in, of interest to them and they wouldn't have to go through the, the budget process. I remember when I first heard of the foundation, it was at Christmas time, and I opened my Christmas present and it was a, a certificate and it was for one foot of the Deschutes River. My dad had made a donation in my name to buy property for the, the Deschutes access. And I still have that certificate today. What I remember was at the time, uh, the Eastern Oregon Land Company, uh, the landowner that had approximately 21 miles of river frontage on the lower uh, west side of the Deschutes River, wanted to sell the property. It had been managed for uh, the families of the original persons who acquired that property when the railroads were being built and no longer serve their purposes. Members of the Fish and Wildlife Commission, I know my father was involved, uh, to say that there was an opportunity uh, to, for the state to acquire it, but if the state wasn't interested, then they were going to pursue forming a club to get maybe 200 individuals to put up $7,500 each and acquire that property for themselves. And so they alerted Governor Atia and... Dave Talbot called and then he came over to see me. He was our parks director. And, he, and these people were, had, that owned the property uh, on the Lorder Shoots were going to sell. And so what, with the picture I have, and you picture it, he had this thing laid out on the floor of the, my office, that's my private office, we're both down there on the floor looking at this map and he's showing me where it is. The Department of Parks and the Department of Fish and Wildlife were both significant contributors to the acquisition price, but uh, we still had about a million and a half dollars to raise from the outside public. And immediately we, be, we met formed a plan how to raise that money and went to work raising it. Oh, these folks got all excited and they all came together and all of a sudden there was this new word that I had heard about and <laughs> that is Oregon Wildlife. But we were all together, Everybody, all of us were raising money and, and, the, and the, that's how it all got going. And it was the most exciting and fun thing I went through. Of all of the stuff that I did as a governor, well, maybe getting sworn in was pretty good, but. <laughs> Starting in uh, late 1993 and, and uh, 1994, uh, the Oregon Wildlife Foundation, Heritage Foundation in those days, now Oregon Wildlife, uh, was approached by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to help uh, promote, uh, participate in, and fund uh, a project that was a uh, turned out to be a multi-year, multi-million dollar project entitled the North Coast Salmon Restoration Habitat Project to help fund uh, a number of fish biologists who would actually go out into the rivers and streams and map out critical uh, habitat areas, both in stream and riparian, where improvements could be made. Uh, so we <clears throat> took this as a challenge and our, we had two major hurdles we had to overcome. One, we had to get the uh, full cooperation and participation of all the major timber companies in Oregon because so much of the land where these rivers and streams were was on their private land. The second hurdle was getting multi-year major funding, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we found that source back in Washington, D.C., of all places, with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, NIFWIF. Then this ultimately morphed into what has now come to be known as it was originally the Governor's Salmon Plan, then it was the Oregon Salmon Plan, and now it's 
uh, I guess the official title would be the uh, Oregon Plan for uh, Salmon and Habitat or Watersheds. I remember going to Diamond Lake in the late 50s, probably around 1958 with my dad. And I remember my dad helping me cast a fly and catching trout that were probably 14 to 16 inches long. And one of the things about the trout in Diamond Lake is they're, they're really stocky, they're really heavy for their length. In fact, when you, you talk to a fisherman around the state and you're describing a really stocky fish, if you say it looked like a Diamond Lake trout, they know what you mean. So over the years, uh, people used bait fish to fish in Diamond Lake and eventually Tui Chubs got established in the lake and gradually they uh, overtook the entire environment, uh, basically destroying the lake. It was no longer a good fishery, the water quality was poor, and um, it was a, a problem. So the Department of Fish and Wildlife wanted to treat the lake and uh, they asked the foundation if we would help raise funds for that purpose. So uh, we put together a statewide fundraising effort and uh, we were able to raise $1.4 million uh, to help with that program. And so I'm really pleased to say that, that since the treatment and restocking the lake, it's returned to a really incredible fishery again. An opportunity like this can come along again. Our history of working together with people and trying to work collaboratively and rather than confrontationally should stand us in good stead. We're in the process of another evolution, uh, generational evolution, and, and how our foundation is changing uh, to attract uh, the next generation. It's going to take people, us attracting uh, men and women uh, in their 30s and 40s who can now then come on and bring in some new energy and ideas and, and uh, uh, continue this, to support the uh, or efforts and the mission of Oregon Wildlife. One of the things I'm really excited about is our investment in building a social media community. Uh, and that is in response to several things. One of them is a recognition by our board uh, that we need to grow uh, our audience. We need to be accessible and open to as many people as possible uh, in terms of their interest in learning about and then ultimately their support for uh, Oregon wildlife and, and, um, and Oregon wildlife habitat. So for example, when it comes to social media, just to, to illustrate uh, how powerful a tool it can be, with one single post, a bear post that we put on our Facebook page, we reached 3.4 million people. Uh, the population of the state of Oregon is just under 4 million people, so you know, with one post we reached almost the equivalent number. In addition, that same post was uh, commented on by 142,000 people and it was shared uh, by 30,000 account holders. So that's uh, an amazing illustration of what uh, one even one single post uh, on Facebook can do. Uh, there are plenty of places in Oregon that could use our help. We help restoring them, help uh, rehabilitating land or Maybe we can acquire a strategic piece of property uh, or help the state acquire one because the foundation doesn't hold property itself um, to help put back this beautiful state that we have uh, in a better condition than it is now. Oregon is really an incredible state. We have a tremendous variety of fish and wildlife throughout the state. You can get in your car and drive for a couple hours and you can be in a totally different climate, different geography, with different wildlife species. And those are things that we can all enjoy and we should all support. Oregonians are very good. Oregonians are, are very willing to give for their cause. And we've got a lot of good causes. The Oregon that I want to live in is an Oregon that has uh, an abundance of wildlife, a diversity of wildlife um, that everybody has an opportunity to enjoy regardless of how. And in order for us to get there, we need everybody to not, not just uh, think about that, but, but actually have a meaningful conversation about it and take action on the basis of, of their beliefs. And I think Oregon Wildlife uh, can help be the vehicle for that conversation and uh, for that investment.